Shabbat Shalom. And Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Congregation Emmanuel. We wish you were here physically with us right now, but we can feel your energy out there with us and praying and hoping next week we will all be back in person. So this week, this Shabbat is going to be a little bit different because this week we are celebrating Disability Shabbat, Disability Awareness Shabbat. And if you look inside of Jewish tradition, and we're going to be talking about it throughout the service, it's actually the greatest leaders in all of Judaism throughout history. It's people who were a little bit different that actually have led us and enabled us to grow and to shine and added brand new light to the world. And so to begin our service, Cantor Adi is going to lead us in the blessing over the Shabbat candles and is going to do something a little special today with, with our candles as we bring this light of Shabbat in. So... Um... I'll be doing the blessing. We'll, we'll sing it together. Hopefully you in your homes, if you're lighting candles, you'll sing with me. Um, and I'll be doing it in American Sign Language. Or ASL, as it is called. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah V'tzivanu Lehat likner Lehat likner Shel So we continue now as we turn to page 20. If you're following along, if you type in to the Google bar, virtual Mishkan Tefillah, we're going to be following along on the Shabbat prayer book. And on page 20, we're moving to Lechadodi, which is welcoming in the Sabbath bride. Very rarely does a cantor say, can you add a little more? And I actually get to add a little more, so I'm not going to pass it up. The, the part of the way the, the prayer book is put together is that over time, each generation comes along and they see a part of what's occurring in their lives that they find significant and that they, they want to add to the corpus of liturgy. And if you go back to the Kabbalistic period, what they were wrestling with was how do you celebrate time? I mean, we've lit the candles, but how do you take something which you can't touch, can't necessarily feel, and make it sacred? And so the way they imagined it was that when you get the most excited, 
When does a room feel like rising up and feel like time has shifted and it's something new? And they said, you know what it's like? It's like when you're, when you're at a wedding and you kind of have this procession come in and then finally when the bride comes in, there's a hush that comes over the crowd and everyone rises and that's where the energy begins to build. And when that energy begins to build, what the Kabbalists would do in Svat in Israel was that they would actually get out of the synagogue and they would leave and they would go into the fields and they would dance and they would celebrate for the sacred time that they are in. So Lachadudi, it comes from that time period. It comes from the Kabbalists trying to celebrate time as if it's a bride. Page 20. Lachadudi. Shalom Alechem. And I know some people at home right now are sitting very focused in the service, and there's other people that might be getting dinner on and they're running around and the service is in the background. But if you can hear my voice right now, I want you to pause and to stop and to take a breath. Because Shalom Alechem, it's this idea of angels coming in and lifting us up to a new plane, that we've been in this one place all week long. And this is saying there's a pause, there's a stop, there's a new time, and now it's time to elevate. So take a big, deep breath in, even if there's chaos around you right now. And let the chaos come in and let the chaos come out. And feel yourself elevating as you move into Shalom Alech.
Teach me, O God, a blessing, a prayer on the mystery of a withered leaf, on ripened fruit so fair, on the freedom to see, to sense, to breathe, to know, to hope, to despair. Teach my lips a blessing, a hymn of praise, as each morning and night you renew your days, lest my day be today as the one before, lest routine set my ways. We rise for the Baruch Hu on page 28. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and seasons glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, for whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai, hamariv. And we prepare to pray the Shema together. So let's all take a deep breath in and out. And finally, we deep breath in and out. One more time in. On page 36. Let's 
for this next this next part of the service we move to Micha Mocha. This better? Not sure which one. I figure one of them will work. We'll we'll, we'll speak. Two keep talking. We'll just do two microphones. It's like a group on. It's a two for here. So, where we are in the service now is at Micha Mocha. And usually we celebrate at this point the idea of us actually stepping into the water in that place of freedom. But, you know, what I often think about is, is Moses. If you think about that at the beginning of his journey, I mean, the beginning of the beginning, when, when he's first told he should be a leader, he says, I, I can't do it. I have speech problems. How am I supposed to lead? And it's, it's right here, it almost seems like his nightmare is coming true because the people of Israel are sitting there and they are yelling at him and they're complaining and they say we should be back. And he can't, I mean, you can't yell over thousands of people, but you really can't yell over thousands of people when that's your biggest challenge. And so I, I always wonder what was it like for him in that moment where he is confronting his deepest challenge of not having speech. And we're told that Moses, what he does, and if you can imagine his hands, that I would imagine they're worn and they're tired after his time in Egypt and everything he's been through, is that he looks down at his hands and he looks down at this worn rod and staff. And he realizes that his speech is not what's going to get him forward, but he can still communicate. And so he takes his staff and he points forward towards the impossible which is that sea. And as he points with no words, just his gestures, the seas part and we step into a new place. That's where we are in Micha Mocha. We are praying for the healing of Freight Friedman, Rusty Holden, Lou Aronow, 
Dennis Parton, Ricardo Castro, Maddie Dennison, Lexi Polivoy, Judith Schiff, Emily Pick, Leslie Schwartz, Katie Taylor, Annette Russo, Ann Singer, Nahama Badalia, Tony Barbasela, Phoebe Rubin, Robin Owen Wood, Andrea Nagelson, Elise Blatt, Ruth Dehovitz, and Zachary Roy. And we say, Misha Berach, Abotenu Imotenu. Avraham Yitzhak V'Yakob, Sara Rivka Rachel Balea, Hu Yivarech Et HaCholim. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and a complete renewal of spirit. And let us all say, Amen. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storm. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship. during this service that we're having technical difficulties, but I'm actually wondering if it's a spiritual challenge. Because one of the things about when you speak into a microphone is that when we're speaking, we can hear our voices coming out of the speaker, knowing that when I speak, it can be heard, but it's different when there's no one in the sanctuary with us, because this is my only tool to hope that my words somehow get to you. 
And so the speakers have been going out, and there's a level of faith when suddenly the senses you're used to having is when you speak and you can hear your voice, you know people can hear you. That on the Shabbat, it's about sometimes not having all of those senses, but actually stepping forward into a place of faith, of saying that I'm going to speak, and I don't actually know necessarily where my words are going or if they're going, but I have faith enough to step forward to have that conversation. That's what we do in the Amidah, is that it's the point in the service where you stand up, you take three steps forward, and you just open yourself up, and you gush, and you let it out, and you have faith that you can be heard. So I invite you now to please rise and to join us in the Amidah. Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei Avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rika, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah, Ha'el, Ha'gadol, Ha'gibor, Ve'chanura, El Ha'yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Ve'konei Ha'kol, Ve'zocher Chasei Avot Ve'imahot, Ume'vi Gula, Ne'vnei Ve'lehem, Le'man Shemo Be'yachava, Melech Hoseh Umoshia Umakein Baruch Ata Adonai Magen Avraham Bezrat Sarah Ata Kipor Le'olam Adonai Mechaye HaKol Ata Rav Lehoshia Mashiv HaRuach Umorid HaKashem Mechakel Chaim Bechesed Mechayei hakol berachamim rabim Tzomech noflim verofei kolim Umatir asurim Omekayem emunato Lishenei afar Michamocha pagipurot Umido mehela Melech meimit umechaye umat miyach Yeshua v'nevanata lachayot hakol Baruch Ata Adonai mechaye hakol Ata Kadosh v'shim Hakadosh u'kedoshim b'chol yom yhalalu chasela. Baruch Ata Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh Please continue silently and let those words spill out of your heart in any language that works for you.
this song written by Dan Nichols based on the prayer called Asher Yatsar, which is our, our morning blessing for healing of the body, but it seemed especially um, fitting for tonight, the theme of tonight's service. <clears throat> Recently, I was talking with a leader of our community, and they were describing what the perfect archetype of a Jewish leader would be. And tongue-in-cheek, they said, 
they probably have to settle because they were out there looking for Moses to lead their organization, and then we laughed. But that comment, it stuck with me. Because yes, Moses has become our ideal archetype for a Jewish leader. But if you really take it apart, it's interesting that the Torah made him the leader among leaders. Because Moshe, Moses, he has disabilities. And he was deeply insecure about them. Moses, it says, had a speech impediment. And I mean, he also had anger issues. But as a leader, when he kneeled at the burning bush, in one of the most transcendent moments in the entire Torah, a moment where he is more filled with the light of God than in any other prior moment in his entire life. It's in that transcendent moment, the first thing that comes out of Moses' mouth is that he has disabilities, his speech impediment, that that will prevent him from leading. Of all moments for one's insecurity to arise, one would not think that it's when you're bathed in the light of the divine. But the depth of the influence of Moses' challenge is the very first thing that comes to his mind and out of his mouth. It's not what one would think, but that is exactly what happens to Moses. Moses thinks of his challenges. Moses thinks of his disability. And he's certain that what he can't do will prevent him from leading effectively. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, it says, But Moses said to the Lord, Please, O Lord, I've never been a man of words, either in times past or now, that you have spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who gives man speech? Who makes him dumb or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you. But as you can see, at one of the most significant points in the entire Torah, it's not in spite of his challenges, but rather it's because of his challenges that he is chosen. Without these challenges given to him by God, he would not be the one to lead. God knows what Moses has been through. And it's exactly because of this that he's chosen to lead. Now, it's one thing for a person to lead who does not know what makes them weak. And then you allow them to go and find it in the line of duty. But it is wholly different when it's the foundation of the way that Moses sees himself in the world. This is the challenge and a foundational idea in Judaism. That on one hand, every single individual is godlike and divine and perfect. If you come along and you say, that person is ugly, that person is dumb, that person is less than, since we are made in the image of God, according to Judaism, you are directly insulting the divine. And it's no ifs, no ands, and no buts. This, it's found all over Jewish tradition. According to the Rambam, in the Mishnah Torah, in chapter 10, verse 12, Maimonides writes that when one sees people with disfigured faces or limbs, it's then when they're supposed to recite the blessing, blessed are you, Adonai, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who makes people different. The Rambam continues. One who sees a person who is blind or lame or with a disability, one should say, Baruch atah Adonai, blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who makes people different. According to Martin Buber, the foundational idea of humanity, of, of humility, in Judaism is not to ever lessen oneself as we normally think about 
in America, that I'm humble, I go, ugh, I'm nothing. Not in Judaism. Rather, in Judaism, you say, I'm godlike. And, and that and, that's the most important part. I am godlike, and so is she. Since we're all made in the divine image. Jacob does not become the foundation of the Jewish people until he has a permanent limp and is known as Israel. Isaac is blind. And according to the Talmud in Sota 10a, Rabbi Yochanan states that Samson, the strongest man in the entire Bible, was born with a limp in both legs. And then it was only when he was blind that his strength intensified and he pulled down a building with his bare hands our challenge becomes that we often view the world and ourselves as less than because of that one thing that we can't do that they can but as we see through example after example in our tradition if we embrace and enable the can over the can't. Uh, and we allow our other gifts to grow. If we think about Steph Curry, if Steph Curry had not been such a scrawny little kid when he entered the NBA, he would have never learned to shoot from distances that seemed ludicrous back then. If Albert Einstein had not had the learning and the speech challenges that he was born with, he never would have been able to see the world so radically different than anyone that had ever become before him in the history of the world. So why is Moses the greatest leader to ever lead the Jewish people? Is it that he facilitated the freeing of the people from Egypt? I mean, maybe. But honestly, there are other Jewish leaders that lead the Jews to freedom. Moses' greatest achievement is going to Sinai and receiving a Torah, the foundation of ethics for our world, the most revolutionary change in modern humanity, the foundation of, of how our society works to this day. But how did he do it? Now, if you look at how he led us from Egypt, he did not do it alone. He knew that he needed Aaron to help him since he was limited in his speech. And then he learned that to be a leader is to know one's limitations and not see that as a weakness, but rather as an opportunity to empower a community. At the base of Sinai, it was his non-Jewish father-in-law, Yitro, who reminded him that he could not do all the work alone. He was limited as a human being and what he needed to do was to delegate and to empower others around him to lead as well. And it's right then, and it's only then, that the greatest leader in all of Judaism included others with him, that he was able to finally receive the Torah. Now, if Moses had been a person who thought he could do it all, if he had been a person who was not so acutely aware of his own challenges, he never could have been able to lean into his God-given gifts. And we would not be here today. What this means for us, and by us, I mean all of us. I grew up with learning disabilities. By us, I mean those who are acutely aware of our limitations and those who are acutely aware of others' limitations and maybe not their own, is that it's our job. It's all of our job to seize on the opportunity to alter our world by encouraging and making space and capitalizing on the gifts that each individual has because that is the Jewish view. Now, when a forest burns down, our short-sighted view of that blackened, destroyed landscape is destruction. But it's that charred landscape and that charred ground that is the most fertile ground 
for new life, which then punches through that blackness with shots of green sprouts just months later. And within generations, where those sprouts began, all we see is a forest. And we seem to forget how it all began. The differences that all of us have, the limitations that all of us feel, they can be the fertile ground where we can lean into others allowing their gifts to shine. And at the same time, allowing our gifts to shine as well. Baruch atah Adonai. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who makes people different. Amen. We continue with the Elena. reach the point in our service when we remember those who are no longer with us. We remember Gay, Sugarman Young, who will be laid to rest after the Shabbat. We remember those who have passed away in the last 30 days. Frank Meyer, Keith Michael Spiegelman, Richard Steinberg, Fata Fred Moradi, Maria Martin, Denka Levy, James Blue, Jax Roos, Ellen Josephowitz, David Artson, Jeffrey Paul Schachter, Elizabeth Betsy Marcus, Diana Shore, and Michael Immersheim. We remember those whose yard site, whose passing, falls on the Shabbat. Grace Lapine Abramson, Laverne Axelrod, Angle Beckles, Irving Bennett, Harry Burler, Stephen Bernstein, Stephen Charnas, Louis Davis, Robert S. Denebeim, Lillian Kurtz Deinstein, Sanford Diller, Valerie Feldman, Shoshana Fogel, James B. Frankel, Super Frusen, May Fry, Miriam Gadye, Sarah Shapiro Gershik, Michael S. Gordon, Emily Gottfried, Tobiah Grenitz, Sally Griver Kochman, Earl Grossman, Evelyn Danzig Haas, Harry S. Halpern, Chris Hellman, Paul Hirsch, Harry Holtz, Jane Huft, Alphine Jacobs, Miriam Leff, Stephen John Lieber, Isidore Lesser, Irma Levin, Jesse M. Levy Jr., Robert Philip Lilienthal, Lawson Magruder, Betty Mann, Matthew Mellon, Teresa Merck, Lillian Miller, K. 
Carol, Carol Golden Miller, Emmeline B. Mitchell, Sophie Benioff Morris, Milton Herman Newman, Suzanne Ornestill, Erwin A. Page, Frank Plachuk, Paul E. Reading Jr., Lena Rishu, Dorothy Rhodes, Zinovi Rosen, Mary Rosenbaum, Martin Lee Salem, Ida Cohen Schwartz, Michael Schwartz, Roy Sklar, Esther Scott, Richard H. Selig, Dorothy Jonas Selig, Barbara Siegel, Vesta Spant, Alex J. Stark, Enid Stein, Melvin Steinberg, Yuri Turnblowski, Valentina Tsibuluskaya, Amy Waldman, Sylvia Weitzman, Abraham Wexelblatt, Nancy Glickberg White, Barry Wildroff, Herb Wiltzek, Ruth Block Winokur, Rose Yanowitz, and Ruth Zorling. If there's someone else who you are remembering, I invite you to say their name out loud as well as to type their name into the chat. We are on page 294. Yitgadal v'yitgadash me'raba. V'yamad yivrach r'yotei v'yamlich machutei. V'chayichon u'v'yamechon v'chaye d'chol b'et Yisrael. Bagala u'v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehesh me'raba m'varach le'olam al'me al'maya. Yitbarak v'yishtabach v'tba'ar v'tramam v'yitnaseh. V'yitadar v'tale v'talal sh'mei d'gudisha b'richu. Leila min ko birchata vashirata tushbachata vnechamata. Damiran biama vimramen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya vachaim alenu vel ko Yisrael vimramen. Ose shalom vimramav. Hu ya se shalom. Alenu vel ko Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom vimramav.
So I'm going to invite you, if you haven't already begun, if you, some of you already started drinking wine, but it's okay. <laughs> I still invite you to bring another glass of wine and to join us in the Kiddush. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu Lemetvotav Eratzavanu Veshabat Kosho Veahava Uvratzon Inchilanu Zikaron Lemasei Vereishit Ki Huyam Tehila Mikrai Kodesh Zecher Litziyat Mitzrayim Kivanu Vacharta Beotanu Kidashta Mikoch Amim everybody at home. <laughs> A little man of Shevet. I thought they were doing Scream Eagle today. It's man of Shevet still? It happens. So I invite you to take out a challah if you have a challah at home and please join us. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. I think next week we're all coming back to the synagogue in person. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We look forward God to seeing willing. you in the sanctuary. God willing. <laughs>